Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. As you can see from the title of this video, this is going to be some motherhood things that I personally don't think are discussed enough. This is going to be my first video of 2022. I spent most of 2021 pregnant and then in October I gave birth to our cutie baby girl. Then I spent the rest of the year kind of adjusting to motherhood and in exactly a week from tomorrow i will officially be out of like the what's called the fourth trimester three months postpartum my baby will no longer be a newborn i think at least that's what i've heard that like newborn is zero to three months but i don't know maybe people do different things so i thought this would be a good time to talk about this obviously i'm still very much a new mom and there's so many things i will continue to learn in the next year 10 years 20 years and i think that's a fun part of being a mom the first thing that i don't think is discussed enough is how sad it is when your baby grows up i don't know if this is an experience just for moms because so far i don't think corey has this at least not as deep of a feeling as I do. Like he is still so, so excited for baby to grow up. I'm obviously excited, but I'm also like just so sad. I feel like she's growing so, so quickly. I didn't know the meaning of the word bittersweet until I had a child. Like I'm pretty sure whoever came up with the word bittersweet, they came up with it, hi BGB. They came up with it to describe, oh, you don't wanna be in the video, that's fine. To describe having a baby, it is just, yeah it's bittersweet it's so happy that they are healthy and growing well but it's also so sad because it just it goes so quickly every night i end up looking at all their videos and photos of baby and i'm just like how is she growing this quickly and then even something that's so sad is putting away clothes that they don't fit into and you're just like how is my baby growing this fast it's it's so sad but also so happy because you get to do more things with them as they grow up and then obviously them being healthy and actually growing the way they should be is happy too. The second thing that I don't think is spoken enough about at all, this is probably, I'm, these topics aren't in any like actual order, but this is the thing that I think is not spoken about nearly as much as it should be. And that is how tiring and difficult breastfeeding is, at least for most people. I know some people have it easy, but those people are in the minority. I think I went into breastfeeding thinking that, well, I guess I had to, two sides for some reason in my head i kept being worried that i wouldn't be able to breastfeed and i think that was almost my mind preparing myself in case i wasn't able to which is a habit i'm getting out of because that's not good anyway but then i also had a thought that like if i am able to if like i do get milk it's just gonna be easy i'm gonna put baby on milk will come i feed her sit down i'll just continue on my day um it's not like that at least for me and at least for many people that I've now spoken to, one is very, very tiring. It just is shocking how tiring it is, but I guess it also makes sense because you're actually feeding another human. So when you're pregnant, you're tired because you're also feeding and growing another human, but to like actually give human, like produce the milk and then feed them and then actually like having someone attached to you for 20, 30, even sometimes 40 minutes, it's tiring, especially in the early weeks, which I didn't notice I was going back because we track baby's food and her sleep and her diapers i was going back and in those early weeks where like i guess i just wasn't paying attention i was feeding her constantly and that was even with having a lower milk supply so with a higher milk supply or just an average milk supply i can imagine it's even more tiring and on top of that um, you have to pump in those early weeks even if you have a normal supply or if you have a low supply like i did i was pumping even more to try and get my butt uh, my I have said blood supply, my breast milk supply up. And then just the leaking, the leaking is getting so extreme, which is weird because I'm now almost three months postpartum. And I feel like I'm now having the most issues with leaking that I've had even in the beginning, which it was my understanding that the longer you breastfeed, the more your body regulates and you don't leak. So I don't know what's going on. When I heard people saying, oh, I don't think I'm gonna breastfeed or I stopped breastfeeding after a month, before experiencing it i was like why do people not want to breastfeed like why would you stop doing it and now i'm like okay i understand i understand where people are coming from my hope is that she gets at least some breast milk for the first year of her life the american academy of pediatrics recommends six months of exclusive breast milk but i just was not able to do that and that's fine so then their next recommend recommendation is at least some breast milk for the first six months and then ideally for the first year so that is what i'm shooting for um if i can continue breastfeeding beyond that that would be great i'm gonna do a whole video on breastfeeding anyway so let me stop going on and on about it so the third thing that i don't think is spoken enough about enough well 
is spoken about enough and I know some people aren't gonna agree on this some people are gonna be like okay uh, I don't know what she's talking about but I do think baby can read your energy I think this is spoken about more when you're pregnant like people make a joke like if you cry a lot when you're pregnant your baby cries or if you're angry when you're pregnant your baby will be an angry baby that I think also makes sense, but I don't know why it's spoken about more when you're pregnant, but then once your baby's outside of your body, people don't talk about it as much. I still think baby can read your energy. Speaking of baby, I'm pretty sure baby's awake. I think, for example, when you're super frustrated and trying to get baby to calm down or go to sleep, baby then reads that frustration and baby's like, okay, well now I'm frustrated because I also want to sleep and I'm having a hard time. And you're just going back and forth with this, with this frustration and kind of, yeah you're frustrated baby's reading that frustrated energy baby continues to be frustrated you continue to be frustrated and then you're in a back and forth cycle instead i think going along with that example of sleeping even if you're frustrated with baby not being able to sleep take a second and breathe and just say like baby's a baby baby's brand new in this world still figuring things out if baby's not sleeping yes it's obviously frustrating but try and think about it as what would baby feel and what would be helpful for baby to feel it would be better for baby to feel an energy that is calming comforting understanding hey baby i understand you can't sleep i know that must be hard for you i'm sorry mama's here um things like that i think is helpful you might think it's just no there's no way baby can read your energy that's what I believe, and I don't think it's discussed enough. The fourth thing that I don't think is discussed enough is that you have to have really strong boundaries going into motherhood. I think this was a really big one. You are going to hear advice from a ton of people, which is great. I mean, I'm giving advice right now, but I think it's really important to take advice and still do what you believe is best for your baby. Caveat that with, obviously, if you're doing something that's clearly dangerous, like if you don't believe in car seats, and so you're not putting your baby in a car seat, like that's clearly dangerous, don't do that. But but as far as parenting techniques, things you don't want your baby to be doing, that's up to you. You are a baby's mom, you're a baby's parent, you can decide if you have a partner with your partner what you believe is best for your baby. And I think holding on strongly to those boundaries is really important because one, if you don't hold on strongly to the boundaries, it's just going to be annoying for yourself because you're going to know what things you would have preferred doing. And two, you want to teach your child that holding strongly onto boundaries is a good thing and so that they can do the same as they grow up. And this is something that I think I've gotten much better at. I was definitely, I wouldn't call myself a people pleaser, but more like, oh, like just giving into boundaries. Now that I have Jude, I'm learning again because I actually was more like this when I was younger, but I'm learning again to really speak up for myself and say like, no, actually, I don't want you to do that or no actually we prefer to do things this way because she's my baby I want to make sure that whatever we're doing and whatever parenting techniques is what I believe is best I've taken the time to research to figure out what I think is best for her um, and so yeah it's important to me that whatever boundaries I have are respected by people and if they're not I will speak up and say like, hey don't do that or hey this is what we prefer and you can do that in a respectful way you don't have to be rude about it but I guess if someone also doesn't pay attention to you when you say it once respectfully, feel free to be rude. I think at that point you gave them a chance and then it's just like, you didn't listen to me, so. And then the fifth thing that I don't think is discussed enough, and this one is a very happy one, is that baby smiling, laughing, cooing, talking, will just make you so, so, so happy regardless of how you feel. I don't know what it is, it just like, it's just the happiest thing, seeing your baby smile and laugh. Baby started smiling pretty early on. I know they say it's like involuntary or because of gas, but now for the past like two, two and a half months, it's very clearly she smiles and laughs in response to us, especially when we get her up from a nap. She's just so happy and it is so cutie. And look who's up, a baby girl's here. Miss Baby, oh my. <laughs> you showed everyone your tummy? Mmm. Hi, you receive it? Oh, my sweetest girl. What are you looking at? Oh, we got a burpee. All right, well, that's a good way to end this video with Miss Girly. We will be filming her three month update in like a week and a half or so. She turns three months in a week and one day. So I guess we'll actually film it on the day that she's three months for that video. Are you talking? That video won't be up for a little bit after she's three months. I can't believe she's gonna be three months. She is so cutie. I love her so much. She's like, what's going on, mama? She's a cutie outie belly button if you got soft. Baby, you wanna end the video with me? Say, I hope you found this video helpful. 
<laughs> let me know if there are things that you think aren't talked about enough with motherhood. Mm hmm And say, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. Mm hmm Say bye. <laughs> say bye. You like camera?